It looks like Governor Kelly now is moving over to the podium, so let's go to her directly with the word from the state of Kansas. Okay. Everybody's, everybody's good. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as many of you know, yesterday I issued a state of disaster emergency declaration uh, to address the challenges created by the wind chill warnings and the severe winter weather conditions Kansas is experiencing. Uh, we needed to mobilize the state resources to address the impact of these extreme conditions. In the meantime, I urge all Kansans to do their part to conserve energy so we can ensure a continued supply of natural gas and electricity as we continue weathering these bitterly cold temperatures. Uh, just some simple steps people can take to limit usage. Keep your thermostat between 65 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Bundle up with sweaters and blankets. Reduce the temperature on your water heater to 120 degrees. Seal any leaks around doors and windows. And close your blinds and curtains to keep warm air inside and cold air out. Uh, and change or clean your uh, furnace filters. Simple steps like this. They don't seem like much, but they will make a measurable difference uh, in conserving energy. And I can't stress this point enough. We all must cut back on natural gas and electricity usage now to ensure we have enough available to make it through these sub-zero temperatures. Uh, how we respond over the next 48 to 72 hours is critical. With me today are Andrew French, uh, chair of the Kansas Corporation Commission, and General David Weishar. He's the Adjutant General of the Kansas National Guard and Director of the Kansas Division of Emergency Management. They'll provide more details regarding actions taken by our electric companies, uh, the natural gas companies, the Kansas Corporation Commission, and the Kansas Department of Emergency Management uh, to navigate our state through these next few days. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to General Weishar. Thanks, Governor. Good afternoon, everybody. Walk through a little bit of a timeline that we had, uh, how fast this has transpired. Uh, we started yesterday morning with conversations relative to a critical issue concerning the availability of, of natural gas. That was about, uh, I think, 10 o'clock yesterday morning we started our, with our teleconference. We monitored the situation throughout the day. As the day progressed, things changed a little bit. The situation changed where it was no longer just natural gas, but there was a potential that our energy providers were going to no longer be able to provide the energy requirements for electricity as well. As such, I requested an emergency declaration from the governor about 4.30 p.m. Uh, approximately 4.40 p.m., I had a response back from the governor that yes, we, she did approve the emergency declaration. So what that does for us, we can activate the Kansas response plan. So some of the steps taken since 4.40 yesterday afternoon, we started with, mess with messaging the importance of conserving gas and electricity across the state. We sent surveys out to county emergency managers to say, hey, what do you need? Um, what is the status in your, your specific and particular county? We began, began communicating, coordinating with the Red Cross and again the county emergency managers on the need or availability of warming facilities, warming centers. And we also notified the National Guard of a potential for utilization of generators that the National Guard has. I'll talk a little bit about warming centers. Uh, it's normal for some communities to have warming centers when there's extreme cold going on. So if you're one of those communities that has warming centers available, check with your local resources to see what the operating hours are and see if they're available. A reminder of yet another challenge with extreme temperatures is we have to keep COVID in mind when we're going, talking about warming centers. So if you utilize a warming center, please wear your mask, work on social distancing, wash your hands, and just be mindful of COVID is still out there. We're communicating with Kansas Department of Health and Environment, as well as local health departments, on how we can mitigate COVID factors once we start use, utilizing warming centers. We're preparing to support communities, as well as counties, in their need for warming centers or anything else that they need. Currently, we have three county declarations in place, but no resources have been officially requested from the State Emergency Operations Center. The counties are Labette County. They've got a water break, uh, water main break in Labette County and Parsons. They've got that well under control, and they're managing that resource, that, uh, that response action at the county and city level. Uh, Cowley County is preparatory in nature, 
in Comanche County due to several power outages. I think Chairman French will talk a little bit about the power outages. I believe uh, Comanche County was due to a rolling power outage, so I'm not sure they've got a significant issue, but I, as soon as I get back to the State Emergency Operations Center, I'll find out. We have multiple calls coming in the State Emergency Operations Center, um, and a lot of that is due to the rolling power outages. So again, no specific needs from counties right now, but we are available and we're ready to assist when they need it. The Kansas Corporation Commission is the emergency services function lead for this, for energy and for this particular response. They have a member working in the State Emergency Operations Center at this time, and they are providing us in the State Emergency Operations Center with the latest information. With that, I will now turn it over to the chairman of the Kansas Corporation Commission, Chairman French. Thank you, and thank you, Governor Kelly, for giving us the opportunity to bring this important message here today. I'll give just a little background on the um, series of events that have, have sort of led us here. Um, as has been mentioned, we started out uh, monitoring this situation uh, as a series of unprecedented natural gas uh, wholesale pricing spikes uh, were flowing through the market. Um, and so what we did was to look and see um, how that was going to impact Kansas customers. Um, as we've discussed this with our gas utilities, um, they don't think that, that this is going to be a supply issue and that there should be enough gas for everyone. Um, but those price spikes are, are very high, um, as much as 100, 150, 200 times the normal wholesale price of gas. And, and so that is obviously a concern. Um, but the situation has then sort of developed into uh, an electric issue, and, and that is a supply issue. Um, given the weather uh, recent, which is uh, extremely out of the ordinary, uh, we have seen unprecedented demand for electricity, especially at this time of year. Um, add to that the fact that the weather has impacted our generation resources, not just in Kansas, but throughout our whole region and all the states surrounding Kansas. Um, we're experiencing issues with wind turbines uh, that are not able to produce as much power as normal due to conditions like freezing fog. Um, our, some of our coal plants are not able to produce as much power as, as normal because of uh, freezing coal stacks. Uh, and then on top of that, you have the natural gas plants, um, which some are experiencing malfunctions due to the weather. Um, and they are also competing with uh, the gas utilities for um, adequate but scarce uh, supplies of natural gas at very high prices. And so you, you have this confluence of events um, which is limiting the availability of power throughout our region uh, at a time where, where all of our customers have extreme demand for that power. Um, and so, you know, one thing I do want to emphasize, uh, as I said, this is not a, a Kansas issue. Um, you've probably heard stories about Texas, uh, who's experienced blackouts, uh, I think as far as yesterday. Um, but this will be impacting every utility in every state in this region. So Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Iowa, and further north. Uh, you know, the, the thing that I think is really important to emphasize uh, is that customers can impact this. I mean, we are right on the edge of, of whether um, curtailments of power are needed or not. And so to the extent folks can conserve uh, safely, uh, we would certainly encourage them to try to cut back on that usage of natural gas and electricity uh, over the next 48 to 72 hours, which will be the critical period. Just a little more context on the rolling blackouts. Um, we did have our first series of rolling blackouts earlier this afternoon. It lasted for about an hour, hour and a half. Um, those were planned and coordinated through the Southwest Power Pool and, th and across all of our utilities across the, across the state. Um, and so it, it was a coordinated event um, by geographic area. Um, those have now ended. We're hopeful that, that we'll have a period with adequate supply, but there is still a possibility as we move forward in the coming hours, um, into the evening hours where demand is high, and tomorrow morning where demand will be very high. Folks are going to be waking up to very cold temperatures uh, and having demand for energy there is a chance that there could be more rolling blackouts at that time. But as I said, these would be coordinated. The goal is for them to be 30 minutes to an hour at a time in any geographic area, and then power would come back on. Um, so that's always the goal, is for that to be coordinated 
uh, and, and plant. Um, so that is where we are right now, and I will toss it back to the governor for any questions. Okay, have you guys got any questions? What should we tell customers right now? Uh, plan on 10 times what your normal bill would be, and then uh, let's get it. So that sticker shock isn't as bad as what it probably will be for everybody. Yeah, I mean, right this minute, they're, they're not going to be experiencing that. You know, that will, takes time to accumulate that. But what they can do to mitigate the issue is conserve energy. You know, not only will it ensure the supply so that we can continue providing uh, utilities to our various households and businesses, uh, but it also, in the long run, will um, keep their, their bills down. With Somewhere. that higher rate, though, automatically the bills are going to be up because we're having to pay more, right? And so yeah, I am not a utility bill I mean, expert. Uh, um, is there something you can? I'd be happy to go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I do want to emphasize, you know, it's a little bit legitimate issue. Our focus right now is on making sure um, customers continue to receive service. But as far as you know, what customers can do. It, yes, you're right. These these higher natural gas prices will flow through uh, gas bills and, and electric bills, um, but I would emphasize that our utilities do have strategies to mitigate that. Um, they have hedging practices that will help moderate the impact of, of sort of the spot prices. Um, so there, that's one aspect. And then for the, the utilities that we regulate, we're going to be looking at practices um, in our rate making function of how we could smooth out those costs over time. So you're right, uh, folks do need to conserve. It will save them money in the long run, um, but we also have some tools at our disposal that we'll look to use. Uh, could you have just want to ask, um, is there any way that we can possibly like strengthen the grid so that this doesn't happen again? Like what were kind of the underlying like, issues that this happened? So um, you know, what I talked about before, uh, sort of the confluence of events with, with generation resources, that, that's part of what's driving this. But you're absolutely right. Uh, it's not our focus right now, <laughs> but I, I have no doubt there will be much time for investigation, litigation in the future uh, to figure out what, what went wrong here and, and how we can strengthen our, our supply of energy uh, and our grid for the future. Can you explain how the shutdown, the temporary shutdowns actually work. Is it just for that benefiting that those 30 to 60 minutes, or does it help in the hours afterwards? And are you recommending that more happen? So it it does it, it does help overall. I mean, for the whole period at which we're we're experiencing a deficit, um, they only shut down you know specific geographic regions for 30 minutes at a time, but then they might go on to another region for as long as they need to maintain um, balance throughout the region. So uh, we only needed it for about an hour and a half today, and that's how long it happened. We hope that that is, is the end of it, um, but that, that is how it occurs. It's not like if you would have done it for three hours, it would help someone. No, it's, it's an instantaneous process. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we had a, a merger not too long ago, the now called Evergy. Did they bite off more than they could uh, handle? I don't recall there ever being rolling blackouts for Westar. So is there something that maybe that needs to be looked at? That's not something we see a relationship to, but certainly we're going to investigate this uh, pretty fully in the coming months. Um, I have a question, maybe it's more for the governor. But um, I was wondering, um, would there be any potential effects on these um, from these building backups on kind of the vaccine storage, because I know the vaccine, some vaccines need a certain temperature to be kept at. Um, so are you guys, is it the way, could it be like targeted where it's not affecting the vaccine storage location? I expect that every place that we are storing vaccines, whether it's in hospitals, other facilities, that they've got backup generators generally, uh, and that should be able to take care of that problem. Last question. How does it get decided of who's getting blacked out? Is there some people that can handle it more than others? So I have, I do have my technical staff here with me today, and I, and I may ask them to elaborate on this if they have some elaboration. But 
Um, our power is coordinated through the Southwest Power Pool. They coordinate the power throughout the region. Um, they have a process of rules and regulations of how they ask folks to curtail the power. That typically goes out, as I said, to all the utilities throughout the region. So this, like I said, this is not a, an energy issue, a sunflower electric issue. This is an issue for all the utilities throughout all the states in that Southwest Power Pool, and that's coordinated through them. Governor, did you tell them to turn the lights off down there? It is my way of helping out. You know, I dimmed the lights in the governor's office this morning and then uh, actually my scheduler was out in the hallway and noticed some meeting room lights on with nobody in there. So yeah, we went around turning off lights. Thank you.